If you're below 1500, I've gotta be super honest with you, chances are your calculation really sucks. Not only that it sucks, but every time you're looking for the deadly combination, it just feels like you're trying to find the needle in a haystack. I get it, everyone is wondering, all right genius, then what are we supposed to do? in order to improve our calculation. Well, generally speaking, you just have to put in the hard work by doing a crazy amount of puzzles, but I'm pretty sure that's not the answer that you wanna hear at least. Uh, there must be some kind of quick way to get good at chess overnight. Mm, first of all, I don't know why would you speak like that, but yes, there is actually one thing uh, that you can try to get better at other than uh, brute calculation. And I like to name that piece placement. Let me give you an example. Let's analyze for a second the position that will appear in one of the following games from the video. So currently white is down uh, two pieces. There is no obvious way of checkmating, but we simply have to evaluate the position kind of like a strategical basis, even though we have sacrificed a lot of material. So a pretty efficient way that uh, masters use in this position is generally trying to count the attackers compared to the number of pieces defending. So as white, we've got uh, definitely the bishop that is uh, ready to attack, the rook, the queen is ready to join, the knight can jump in the center, and also the other rook is ready to, let's say, swing over every time if needed. While honestly speaking, black has basically two obvious defenders, like the queen and the knight. And the main thing that like really jumps to consideration while uh, thinking about sacrificing two pieces in this position is that all of these guys uh, on the queen side are not really participating into the game. So yes, technically speaking, uh, black is up two pieces, but we can see highlighted by the red color that they're kind of down two pieces because these guys are simply not in the game. I mean, we can say that the extra material that black has is like having a third nipple. It may be interesting to show off to your friends, but it serves no practical purpose and just gets in the way. Plus, it can be pretty awkward to explain it to people why you have it in the first place. So yeah, to cut the nonsense, I'm gonna be jumping in three games against lower rated players, trying to explain my thinking process as an international master and how I am able to come up with this kind of sacrifices without having to calculate every single detail. So without further introduction, let's just dive right into the action. All right, guys, getting another white game. Gonna be sticking with uh, E4, and it looks like we're about to get another Vienna opening. And opening going for the move knight f6. So for a little bit of context, you will face all kinds of uh, different moves in this position. Knight c6 is one of them, knight f6. I face c6 occasionally as well. You can face the bishop move either to c5 or b4. Um, so uh, we kind of uh, already went uh, over most of them in this sort of rating climb that we're doing. In case you haven't checked out those videos, uh, you can do it by looking at the playlist about e4. And on knight f6, the nice thing about this specific idea is that it gives us a great opportunity to go for the Vienna Gambit. And we do that by playing the move f4. Now, what is the point of f4? You may be wondering, are we just trying to play some kind of version of the King's Gambit? Well, yes and no. But the main idea, you know, like, let's say compared to the King's Gambit, the point of this opening is that um, it's not losing. No, I'm kidding. The King's Gambit is not like losing. It's, it's a draw, of course, but uh, it just works even better because if they accept, White gets a close to winning position after... The important move that White has in this position, which is simply this idea of disturbing the enemy knight by going e5. And you may be wondering, okay, e5, hit the knight, he just has to go back. And this is such a key position, especially for low rated players, because I feel like everybody would just be tempted to play a move like d4, trying to get back the pawn. In the meantime, blundering this idea that black can check, which is very annoying motif. So first, important, go knight f3, make sure that there is no queen h4 check, and yeah, next we could continue with d4 and so on. The opponent plays g5, which is an interesting move. Now, we have definitely many ways of dealing with this. I feel like h4 is very interesting, forcing g4 and then play knight g5. But I'm going to play this in kind of like the Muzi 
video gambit fashion kind of so my idea is to answer uh g4 not by moving the knight but by actually castling and on gf3 to go bishop takes on f7 and then queen f3 with a big attack which is typical for the muzio but here we just have a simple move d4 why is this so good we just get the center and gaining a tempo when i please bishop b4 so we're just going to continue development so important to uh, castle here and yeah i feel like opponent has a pretty difficult position goes for knight c6 we've got like a number of different moves should we play it very aggressive i feel like you guys may want a very aggressive continuation right now uh I can obviously play it like a bit slower, but I feel like uh, we just have such an interesting opportunity to sacrifice that I'm just going to go for it. Now, there's not really that much uh, explanation behind this move. It's just that we're sacrificing two pieces to open up the enemy king. And because all of these four guys are on the queen side, it gives me the feeling that his king is very weak. Okay, I'm not seeing the checkmate now move by move. Just to make sure. It's just that intuitively it feels like his king is going to be pretty lonely. So this is just the kind of decision that you make based on uh, experience, I guess. Um, okay, opponent plays queen g6, which is actually a good move. Because I don't have such, a, such an obvious uh, way to continue the attack now. I mean, there is bishop g5, bishop h6 check, but not sure what that will accomplish. Hmm. Considering also queen f3, knight d4, queen d5, maybe. Sorry, I meant that. e6 was also a move that I had uh, on my radar with bishop e5 ideas. But e6 maybe just goes king e8 now. So see, that's sometimes the drawback of sacrificing two pieces. If you're unsure how to continue, you may just be down two pieces, which is, yeah, pretty risky nonetheless. But I think I'm just going to go knight d5. We just keep this check in uh, reserve and introducing annoying motives. The knight could be very useful in the attack. We just play it kind of positional now, which sounds kind of crazy, but as I was saying... Got all these pieces on the queen side while we have knight, bishop, rook, and queen that are ready to join. It basically has these three pieces kind of trying to stop them. So already bishop g5, king e6, knight f4 wins the queen. So it's forced to play king e8. And then I probably have some interesting continuation like queen f3, which threatens queen f8 mate. And he's going to be forced to play like knight e7. Uh, yeah, definitely have some interesting, uh, prospects, uh, right there. Trying to come up with more of like a concrete move. Maybe we can actually switch the move order of this and begin with queen f3. And in case of knight e7, we have bishop h6 to begin with. Yeah, that's actually way more clever. Wait, is it? Queen f3 has got uh, knight d4 that I forgot to check. I mean, there's queen f2 at the very least. So that should be okay. Wait, how about bishop h6? I feel like bishop h6, I'm just missing an obvious win. Yeah, I don't know why I was considering only bishop g5. But bishop h6, the point is king e8. Now this is a checkmate because knight covers e7. So yeah, bishop h6 actually obvious move here. Um... For some reason, uh, I checked bishop h6 in like the previous line and I was kind of unsure about it and just didn't look at it at all here. But uh, yeah, now if king 8, rook f8 was made and against this knight f4, simple move, uh, collecting the queen and then opponent's gonna have three minor pieces for the queen, which is not that bad if you think about it, but just because of the fact that his king is uh, so vulnerable, it's really gonna cost him. So, 
yeah, I'm gonna just throw in this little check first. In case he takes, I'm gonna take back with a discovery. Anyways, capturing the queen on the very next move, so... Um, yeah, it goes to e8, we don't really mind. And, uh... Yeah, I could drop the bishop back. I could also play queen g4, but he's gonna defend with knight e7. So I think queen f3 could be a bit more effective. Once my queen gets to f7, it's gonna be very close to checkmate. Actually, we have a very nice mating net incoming. Okay, he does that, which is gonna be easier, but I'll show you the mating net in the analysis tab. So that is just a checkmate on f8 right there. And look at this, guys. This is gonna be so beautiful. You have no idea. So what if opponent plays uh, the move? Knight to e7. Can you spot the first checkmate? Because I feel like uh, we could potentially get a very nice final picture here after uh, white begins with a move uh, queen f7 and now king d8. So maybe wondering, okay, how do we break through? There is bishop takes on e7, he takes with the knight, and there is queen f8. Just sacrificing the queen, and we're gonna end up getting this pretty nice back rank ourselves. Uh, I know what you guys uh, are thinking. Okay, this checkmate is kind of cute, but I'm wondering whether this sacrifice was any interesting or not, or it was complete nonsense. So, uh, yeah, why don't we find out together? So, let's go to the starting position and turn on the engine. So, you see, engine says bishop takes on f7 top line followed by knight takes on g5 so these are top two moves which means the attack is very promising because computer is usually kind of afraid to sacrifice um prefers let's say slower moves that are kind of cold but if the computer says bishop takes on f7 is so strong here it's clearly crashing and i apparently made a weak move here because i took with the bishop so Rook takes on f4 was better, and I haven't considered this move. That's kind of my bad. Because whatever he goes, the point is I have rook f8 check, which is uh, sacrificing the rook to open up bishop's path. So the point with this sequence, now for you guys to understand why bishop takes on f7 was so strong, is that now we either get the mating attack, or if he takes, rook takes on f4 simply wins the queen. So we're going to get a position where... Uh, we have a queen for a rook and two minor pieces, but because the enemy king is so exposed, we're going to be just mating him pretty soon. This is why computer says it's plus eight in this position. Bishop takes on f4 was a, was a bad move because after queen g6, according to the computer, this is a defensible position. So we're down two pieces, but the position is close to equal. I'm actually curious. I, I, I think I'm going to actually do a little bit of a test and I'm going to... Uh, put this position uh, in hands of uh, Lila Zero and to like a stronger stock piece. So I'm gonna rent some uh, servers, uh, see what the supercomputers think about this because my human intuition thinks this should be like plus two, plus three. And I don't know, we'll check. So yeah, for now, after bishop uh, a5, I had bishop h6 and that's obvious win. So yeah, now I'm just gonna have a quick look on what the supercomputers think about this position and uh, I'm gonna give you the uh, feedback in a second. All right guys, as you can see in the bottom right, uh, we are in chess base and uh, I rented a stronger stockfish 15 and uh, Lila zero, which, you know, as you can see with the Eva, Lila thinks it's just a small edge for white, like a zero three, while stockfish says like a plus zero seven. So let's just put some moves on the board and see what should be the resulting position. I'm gonna like follow up Stockfish in this position because whenever you have more of like a concrete position with precise calculation, Stockfish is just completely outpowering Lila. So usually when I do analysis for the courses, uh, I like to have both because uh, it gives me some uh, extra feedback. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna play like this position for 10 moves and then the engines will normally come to like a close conclusion. As you can see, Lila already kind of missed the strength of the E6 move at first and starts agreeing with uh, Stockfish. So again, like concrete position, Stockfish is usually the way to go. 
if it's something like more positional, more intuitive, I like uh, Lila better. So um, yeah, this seems kind of forced. Queen d3 apparently important, and uh, Black already has to come up with a queen sacrifice. So yeah, apparently this was kind of best play, rook f8, and let's say bishop h4. And you have a position where white has a queen and a pawn, and black has rook and two minor pieces, which Stockfish thinks should be around plus one for white. So, uh, yeah, pretty considerable considerable edge, but definitely quite uh, unclear. So, um, yeah, definitely kind of uh, not what I was hoping for, because uh, yeah, I was expecting more of like a large advantage for white, but... Even this, I think it's kind of reasonable since white still keeps pressure. So, uh, with that being said, I think we can just move on to the following game. All right, everybody, getting another white game. And uh, apparently looks like uh, we finally get to face e5. So, against this move, we're going to be sticking with the so-called Vienna opening or uh, Vienna gambit. So, uh, yeah, I know... Some of you are probably wondering, wait a minute, aren't we supposed to just play the move uh, knight f3 and just go for like some kind of a Rui Lopez sort of stuff because I've heard that's the best opening and that just makes you a better chess player. So uh, you can definitely do that uh, if you're like planning to become a world champion one day. But uh, if you're looking for like very fast gains and... Uh, yeah, something that will get you started really quickly, at least below 1500. I think the Vienna opening is a much better choice for you because it's just like uh, way simpler to play and your opponents will usually do much worse. So uh, opponent goes for the move knight f6. This position, I expect any kinds of knight move, bishop out, b4 or c5, d6 sideline, a lot of options, but uh, generally our play remains kind of the same, which is the nice part about the Vienna. So against knight f6, because that's blocking the queen's path, f4 works really well. And uh, if uh, you're playing this in this rating range, like below 1500, a lot of them will simply take on f4, which just gives you, you have just like a close to winning position right off the bat. So uh, why is this bad? You may be wondering. Well, because you simply go e5 and black does not have a safe retreat for the knight, you know, like. They would just love to put a nice, the knight on a nice and uh, pretty cozy place. But, I mean, the knight just has to go all the way back home. Has to move in with his parents once again. That's not going to be a fun spot. So, uh, I know you may be, may be wondering, wait a minute. Uh, cannot he just go knight h5 and try to hang on to the effort pawn? Uh, well, the answer is not because the queen covers that square. So, watch out for that. The knight literally has to go back to g8. So uh, this is, by the way, a critical position already where a lot of the white players are messing things up because uh, a very tempting move just looks to uh, play d4 and get a massive center. I mean, you have no idea how to capitalize on the nice center, but you still want to get it, of course. But the problem with that is black has this very annoying check and you can easily get in trouble. So first... Get rid of that option. D4 is not like running anywhere. We're going to play it on the next move. Just make sure to watch out for opponent's counterplay as well. Okay, black plays the move D6. Um, just going to go for D4. By the way, little detail that I wanted to mention. In case of queen E7 in this position, we just go queen E2 to unpin. And white is still much better. And after D6, I simply like to go for the move D4. And in case of D E5... You can definitely recapture, but there is even a nicer move uh, in that position, which is also mentioned in my uh, yeah Vienna course on Chessable, which I think is a pretty nice course, so make sure to check it out if you want to add some extra inches to your penis. So that would be pretty nice, exploiting the pin. And bishop to g4, that's actually making me a little bit unsure how to play this. I think simplest is, yeah, just... Recapture the pawn. There's like nothing wrong with that. Another move that would be bishop c4, and we're like fishing for a little trick. So I'm just gonna do that. 
We always fish for the little tricks. You know how it goes. I'm hoping he just goes DE because we have a very nice uh, little winning sequence. If you guys can pause the video, try to find that. I think it's pretty nice. Most likely the opponent is not going to allow it because they never do, especially when we are recording. But uh, yeah, I still think it's a nice developing move. So he goes bishop takes on f3. I think we don't have a big choice besides like taking back with a queen and... With that, uh, well, we're hitting b7, threatening to take, and he now uh, starts checking, so. Uh, yeah, we have definitely like a variety of moves. Like we could definitely just move the king anyway, ex except d2, d2 is looking pretty ugly. But I think we have a simply a stronger and even easier move to deal with this check. And that is to play for g3. And uh, what's the point on uh, pawn takes? Yes, we can take back because the rook is covered. But besides that, white has like a huge trick in that position if they take. And I think black uh, has very high chances to overlook that. Because uh, if they take, uh, queen's path will get open towards the f7 square. We can just take that for sinking d8 and then at the very least pick up the bishop with a winning position. So, expecting opponent to perhaps go back uh, all the way home to d8, but just look uh, what a nice position we managed to get from the opening with like such easy play, such a nice lead in development. I mean, imagine losing after praising white's position so much. So, <laughs> uh, Okay, opponent just goes queen e7. Now, what is like the simplest move? We have definitely a bunch of tempting options like knight e5, going queen b7 as well, winning the rook. I mean, yeah, I think at this point we're generally just gonna stick with the simplest. And when I see a rook, that is usually, you know, a pretty good sign. So. Yeah, guys, when you can collect the rook in the opening, it's just uh, basically like you manage to, <laughs> uh, let's say you're alone on, uh, yeah, for some reason, you're sitting somewhere on uh, an island and you're just kind of trapped there, like lonely, and there's no food, no nothing, and you just find like a KFC bucket or something like that. That's like literally you when you win a rook in the opening like that. We have to take that rook in order to survive, so... Um, okay, now, I just said that, but I'm wondering, you know, there is this saying, whenever you see, like, a strong move, you have to look for better. Here we go for knight d5, that's like hitting the queen, threatening these ideas. We also have a pretty tempting check, but he has queen d8, so that is not a checkmate yet. You can also castle, since the rook is not running anywhere. I think castling is the most instructive. Just because, well, this is trapped, so the bucket is not running anywhere. But, I mean, you know, can uh, bring some more pieces to the party, maybe the rook, maybe bishop takes on f4 could be a nice move next. It's just all about getting, like, quick development. Like, look, it's move 10, I castled, I have all the pieces developed, opponent has, like, five pieces on the uh, back rank, so... Uh, I think that just uh, speaks for itself. So, um, yeah, you shouldn't really have uh, much uh, trouble getting out of this uh, rating range below, like, let's say, 12, 13, 1400, simply by following uh, basic opening rules, trying to, like, get quick development. Uh, of course, not plundering um, any obvious things and... Uh, subscribing to the channel that also i've heard helps uh, in case you subscribe uh, it's proven by science that your rating uh, increases by at least uh, 69 points instantly so you may very well just do that now and uh yeah when it literally has no moves it's just such a sad position he may just resign okay just kidding he won't but yeah i'm just gonna continue with the bishop f4 idea Rook is not running anywhere, so no need to rush with that. Now we can play like rook e1, winning the queen. There's also idea of check, queen there, and then rook e1, bishop e7. 
I see like a rookie seven type of idea, kingy seven, rookie one. Oh my god, that could be pretty sexy. King d6. This is like, by the way, a super unnecessary thing that I'm calculating, but uh, yeah, it might be good content. So uh, we go knight b5 in that position. He has king there. Do we have like a win? I kind of don't see it. Also cannot take the queen, so it's pretty risky. I know you guys want to go for the content, don't you? Yeah, I think I'm just going to start with a simple move because I'm using this rook specifically because after takes, I have queen c8 intermediate. So if I use like the other rook, he's going to he's gonna take with check. So I just get an extra option there. That's why I'm using this one. And on queen e3, of course, that comes with a check. We just uh, take it. And now... Uh, there is this, if I'm looking for like a quick mate. Can also just pick up the rook. Most likely the knight after. And all I did in this game was just uh, talking nonsense and developing my pieces. So I see no reason why you guys uh, should be able to recreate this quite easily. Uh, so, yeah, this is going to take on f7 to d8 expecting to get played uh yeah maybe just rookie one get rid of the annoying pawn now okay it should be a pretty easy conversion not um yeah anything special to like really explain i just need to kind of get rid of his rook i guess and make it uh easier to win so always when you're having so many extra pieces just look for ways to simplify the positions okay i think i'm just gonna go queen e4 actually threatening a pretty <laughs> funny made in one he has to play knight f6 not sure he'll find it though even if he does we have queen e6 protecting the bishop there Besides uh, other things as well. So, opponent might be like really nervous here, thinking that I'm about to flag. By the way, guys, in case you're uh, nervous, we do play a uh, five second increment, so it's pretty impossible to flag. But usually, when I say that, end up flagging in the very next uh, minute. So, uh, yeah, that's a time that I would recommend in case you want to, let's say, avoid uh, flagging usually. So if you're specifically focused on trying to play better chess and not just uh, yeah playing fast like an animal and win on time, definitely recommend uh, increment games. So, uh, ready to take next, maybe knight b5, get rid of the bishop. Opponent making this... Uh, yeah, trying to hang on specifically because I'm low on time. Little does he know he's about to get uh, knight checkmated. So <laughs> that is going to be a pretty funny picture. Let's see. As like knight a6 only move, but then queen a8 is nice. And then knight a7 mate for the final picture. I don't see any way for him to... Avoid this unless he moves the rook, maybe. Oh, knight c6. There is knight a7. There is like takes. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Gonna do that. And I think that's a mate if he takes. If my calculation is precise. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that is indeed a checkmate. I mean, you know that feeling when you play the checkmating move, but the game does not end? That is a pretty goddamn scary feeling, so... Uh, there was actually something very interesting that I wanted to go over a little bit earlier in the game. So I wanted to mention that a lot of people may go queen e7 against you in this position where the important part is to go queen e2 unpinning. So he has to go back with a knight. And then uh, the same threat we need to watch out for. We go knight f3. And in case they play d6, you really want to be aware of this little trap. We go knight d5, hitting their queen, and after queen to d8, sure, this move wins, but my favorite, 
knight takes on c7. They will be taking with the queen, and then we have discovery. So we pick up their queen with a completely winning position. So this is the one thing I really liked. And uh, then I'm just curious about the line that we were uh, calculating here in case of uh, yeah, queen to c8. Curious what the computer thinks. So I was uh, eyeballing this variation after rook e7, king takes, rook e1. Cannot go back because of mate, so only move for him was this. And now I was thinking knight b5 was the only move. Oh, here I have a very nice mate. Oh my god, this would have been so nice, guys. By the way, you can go ahead and pause the video. Uh, I just realized we have a very nice mate in this position, so I'm sure the computer agrees because it's just like completely forced. But the idea was uh, if you manage to spot it to go rook e6. And after pawn takes, queen takes his mate. I'm actually pretty annoyed that uh, I forgot about this little trick. But yeah, I think that would have been a pretty nice uh, way to speed up things here with rookie 7. Yeah, you just forced mate in 8, um, as shown by the computer. By the way, if you don't play this move, you're losing. But uh, that's like clearly better. And yeah, opponent, of course, can throw in 94. But I don't think it's going to be super helpful in the long run. After this, like rook f4, the queen is able to come back and uh, should be a pretty straightforward mate. I kind of picked the safe route by going rook e1 and uh, yeah, then kept it simple for the most part. But yeah, would have been a pretty nice uh, mate to get. I'm kind of kicking myself for uh, not spoiling the move uh, rook e6 in this position. Would have been a really nice shot. But anyways, I think it ended up being a pretty instructive game. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and can just move on to the following game all right everybody getting another white game we're gonna be sticking with the king's pawn and all of a sudden it looks like we're facing the main move which means it is gonna be vienna opening time so we're going for the move knight c3 and already it looks like we're just facing a hyper aggressive opening which um yeah I'm not sure what it's the name of it, and there's like specific variation. I just know that uh, against <clears throat> Knight F3, this is actually named the Latvian Gambit. But I don't know for a fact that this is covered in the sidelines chapter of my course. And I think White is just winning after pawn takes because it's just like we get kind of a reversed version of the mm, King's Gambit, but we can like really keep this pawn. Uh, in case he tries to recapture, but looks like he's just completely ignoring it with a move like bishop to c5, where, uh, yeah, I think there is something that my opponent could have potentially underestimated, which is uh, something that I see quite a lot of the white players actually forget about while playing the Vienna opening themselves, which is this little check that's kind of forcing the enemy king to move. So, um, yeah. It's definitely not the only move, but just the idea of making sure that uh, opponent uh, is going to lose the right of castling is pretty appealing, not going to lie. So, um, yeah, okay, he just plays King F8, which is definitely something that is uh, very uh, expected. Now, there's many ways uh, to play this position um yeah obviously i think one of the best moves may be something like bishop to c4 simply continue development uh just to prove a point i could actually play a very surprising move which is queen d1 just kind of trying to highlight the fact that okay the h5 square is not like really the ideal place for the queens it's it's on the edge it can easily become a target and we mainly use the queen to make sure black is losing the right of castling. So it kind of damaged him in the long run. And here a lot of the lower rated players would make a mistake to just kind of try to rush and uh, potentially checkmate quickly. So uh, yeah, I mean, whenever you do that, just don't like go all in on the attack. Okay, you have a long term initiative. It's not like <clears throat> opponent can yeah come back and get a safe king so easily. Um, and yeah, hope you get that point. And yeah, I think I'm just going to stick with like a 
reasonable move actually threatening mate <clears throat> expecting him to move the queen somewhere and then we just like continue with development i think in case he doesn't miss made in one on f7 so yeah what do you guys think we should do in case of queen e8 should we like try to keep queens on the board and exploit the fact that his king is uh, pretty vulnerable or actually just go for the end game because we're gonna be having the extra pawn so i think that's definitely a very interesting kind of decision and personally i may just go for the end game just because it's gonna be a little bit more clear sure like having the weak king is nice but uh you know you really want to think about making uh safe decisions in the long run because let's be honest i mean you have an end game you've got the extra pawn it's gonna be pretty hard to mess it up really so <clears throat> opponent just goes d5 which is uh <clears throat> mainly aim to stop the mate in one threat but i think we can just take with the bishop sense that's protected by the knight and with that we're also reinforcing this threat so not super sure what this move uh accomplished for my opponent but uh i know it just gave us another pawn which is gonna make it even simpler uh whether it comes to the possibility of trading queens or not so he just goes for the move queen e7 that's uh simply protecting against the mate and uh on the next move i think he is very likely to just do something like knight f6 and just uh develop attack both the queen and the bishop so do we have any way to <clears throat> put <clears throat> immediate pressure on my opponent? I mean, I could just sort of ignore that, but also like an interesting move that comes to mind is bishop takes on g8, which looks a bit weird, but I kind of like it because this move is very annoying, you know? It's like, I don't know, guys, you go to like a family gathering and, uh, you know, you got to like meet up with that super annoying uncle. Y you'd much rather not have that meeting or, I mean, y you get what I'm going with this. So, uh, I think for that reason, we can just get rid of this knight completely. And, uh, yeah, just uh, enjoy a pretty nice position with two extra pawns. And the opponent does not have... Mm, many active moves to choose from goes for king recapture so the point was if he takes with the rook i have the option of collecting h7 as well so that's why he took it this way and now i have a choice between uh, either a move that is opening up the bishop d3 or i could also go for like a developing move which is knight f3 so i think both of them are equally good I'm just gonna stick with this one for now. Um, in case he goes for something aggressive, like let's say an e4 sort of pawn push, I mean we can just uh, move the knight away, like knight g5. Um, I mean perhaps I was just blundering the f5 pawn, so <laughs> ignore what I just said. But uh, yeah, could have got knight h4 at the very least. Now we get castle and opponent if he could have made like a legal move rook aj to f8 complete castling maybe his position was reasonable but that was not a thing at least last time i checked so uh black is really in a world of trouble because he just has a very hard time uh, coordinating his pieces and bringing the rook into the game i mean think about it it really feels like he's playing down a rook so <clears throat> Sometimes in chess, it's not really about having an extra rook, like just, you know, literally capturing it. But just because of the fact that the enemy rook is inactive, it can feel like you just have an extra rook, if that makes any sense. So, uh, opponent goes queen f6. Now, what is he trying to accomplish with that move? Well, I think he's simply preparing bishop takes on f5. So, um... Uh, I've got a bunch of ideas to defend the pawn, but normally when one of your pieces is attacked, what are you supposed to do? Generally, most people think, okay, my piece is under attack. I gotta like either retreat or defend it. 
But you should always look for the opportunity of making a stronger threat. So opponent is attacking a pawn. And I'm going to defend by using offense and attacking a stronger piece. So not only that I'm attacking the queen, but I'm also attacking this pretty lonely bishop. Now, the main tactical point behind this is that black cannot really take the pawn. And the reason for that is pretty simple. We just go for the queen trade and then we pick up the bishop and we just have an extra piece. I know maybe some of you were wondering, cannot we just go for like a back anchor idea? I didn't really like it since we can just retreat the bishop, so I hope that's clear now. And he just goes for the move queen f8, it seems. So, have the opportunity of taking, also have the opportunity of playing f6, which I think I'm going to go for, even though I don't have a lot of time left on the clock. This just feels like a nice little idea to kind of weaken opponent's king. I mean, opponent didn't really have a threat, so this was a weak move, perhaps. But I just kind of panicked a little bit because we don't have that much time left. <laughs> so f6 was a bit nonsense, but yeah, I should have played d3 instead, I guess. But still, that's not like it really affects the position. When you're like so much ahead, unless you're blundering a piece or... Stuff like that. You should still have a very kind of winning situation. So you're just going to eliminate this bishop. Could have also played something like d3. Perhaps I'm going to do that uh, next. Just trying to develop. I think I'm even going to go d4. Because I want to speed up things a little bit in terms of opening up the position so I can infiltrate uh, into opponent's camp and exploit the weakness of his king and uh yeah now i even have like a g4 idea trying to win a piece I think i'm just gonna go for it i'm not sure it's actually uh working that well but i'm highlighting the pin he's got like a bunch of moves such as let's say queen d5 trying to counter attack uh but i think maybe just take and take should be okay so perhaps g4 is winning. I mean, he's got h6. I kind of saw that. But maybe f7 could be interesting. And if he takes to the king, then we have a move that's spinning the bishop. Which is queen f4. So. Yeah, this got like a little messy just because of the time scramble. But I hope it's still, uh, yeah, somewhat interesting. So. Yeah, black definitely taking some time here. He plays the move uh, queen d5, but as I was saying, like, sure, he's gonna take the knight, but because of the queen being placed there, he has literally no checks, and cannot really take back, because I feel like that's giving us a pretty promising attack. The queen takes, and... Dude, these pawns are, like, the craziest pawns of all time. I don't know, like, what to compare these pawns with. It's just, like, they're unbeatable. Now I just have a simple fork. King f7. Uh, I mean, you can just promote. You can promote to a knight for fun, but thinking what the queen is also perfectly reasonable. But still, we gotta actually kind of watch out for this because you may be very tempted to go for, like, let's say, king e6 and just pick up the rook. But we're in danger of allowing perpetual right there. So we should definitely not do that and uh, have a bit of patience. It's important not to blunder perpetual. You guys uh, notice that. And let's see. King f5. But that's just allowing mate in one. Can you guys like spot the mate in one? Here it is. So... Yeah, I was actually intending to meet uh, the move king d5, which is, you know, if you, like, take the rook, that's just, uh, okay, now it's winning because I have f1 square. But you want to, like, uh, really watch out for this kind of perpetual idea. So, uh, I was actually planning to meet king d5 with queen g5. He has only move king d6, and then I, I wasn't actually, like, planning to win the rook. I wanted to just uh, go for something like this, either queen f4 or queen g3, which is... Forcing queens off, being up a rook, that's like uh, obviously enough. So, important lesson right there when you're up so much in material, 
do not uh, go for stuff like this. You see, like we're up so much, but it's still not too late to mess it up. Now you just see the eval bar uh, dropping like crazy, just <laughs> table tennis uh, eval right now. Uh, you can just go queen g4 and uh, oops, that wouldn't be so good. But he just has this little motive and there is no way for us to avoid the perpetual. So no matter like how well you play, you still have to watch out for these little ideas. And uh, yeah, I think the the opening was pretty smooth. The kind of important decision of this game was uh, at this moment, I feel like. Sure, we could do anything, but I feel like bishop takes on g8 was a very nice practical move, making sure that he gets no activity, no annoying knight f6, and then we basically had like a pretty easy time uh, developing and getting to his king. And uh, critical move here was also whether g4 it's that clear or not. So after g4, Basically, all the moves are like leading to an obvious win, as you can see. Like, all of them are plus five, plus six, because we win the bishop. But he had one move that was kind of unclear if he finds h6. So, on h6, I was planning to go f7, if you remember that. And if he takes with the king, I've got queen f4. And the bishop would have been pinned, and we just take this on the next move. And g5 allows queen takes on f5. But I have to say, I did uh, miss the fact that he can play king g7. And this wouldn't have been super obvious. Like, I can continue queen f4, bishop c2. And then, apparently, if I find g5, which I'm not sure it's a move that I would really play, because it feels unnatural to open up this file, would have probably sticked with uh, maybe like bishop d2 type of ideas, trying to pin and just bring my piece into the game. The game could have become, like, pretty messy, so... Uh, I think a small inaccuracy that I did was just pushing f6 in the first place because uh, oh, actually f6 it's top line according to the computer. It's just that here, oh I see, the computer just likes queen h4 a little bit better. f6 was apparently very good. And then just, uh, yeah, keep it simple with a move like d3, rook e1, no need to rush with taking. So, yeah, a few mistakes were made. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. G4 was, okay, everything was fine thus far. It's just that G4 was a little bit too aggressive. I mean, it was really kind of like a concrete scenario where I wanted to just pick up the piece, but you could obviously play a simple move, like uh, move the queen around. Bring the bishop next. Just imagine you can get the bishop into g7. That has to be good for us. So <laughs> with that being said, I think we can just move on to the following game. 